simply what it's all about. It's nothing um, so great that anybody wants um, any glory for ourselves, but just to, to pray for our sons, to pray for our children, to pray for our homes. So with that, I'm going to open us up in prayer and then I'll introduce our speaker tonight and just talk about why I'm, I'm excited, uh, Dr. Marion Holloway, and um, then we'll go from there. So let us pray. We're so thankful for um, this day and um, for our time together. Um, Father, we're pausing now to come and pray for all of the mothers that's under the sound of my voice. God, our desire is to be those um, daughters of the king, those women that you've called us to be. Father, we're here as mothers. We're standing in the need of prayer. Father, we thank you for the strength that your word tells us that we have. No strength of our own, no confidence um, in ourselves, but it all comes from you. So we're just so thankful. We're standing here. We're, we're letting our petitions be known, but God, we're still we're standing as well saying, thank you, God. We thank you, God, that um, that you are, that you have given us your word and God, we become wise because we read and we study your word. We, we become successful because we meditate on your word. So we just say, thank you. Father, our desire is not to miss any opportunities that you give us to plant seeds in our children, in our sons. And um, we don't want to miss opportunities to encourage and to witness to them, Father, because our desire is that they become men of God. Father, we uh, thank you for your word to say that if we lift you up, God, that if we glorify you, that uh, you would draw them unto you. So we just say, help us, God, not to miss, again, those opportunities to witness to you. Father, our desire is to teach them, God, as we sit in our homes and to teach them as we walk along the roads, we teach them as we lie down and as we rise up. God, that's our desire. And we just pray for that strength and that um, endurance to keep going and doing those things that you've called us to do. Father, our desire is that we um, that we raise Joshua's men who are bold and courageous. God, our desire is that we encourage them into becoming Joseph's, those men who have a good work ethic. God, we thank you. We pray that you help us to raise David's, those men uh, that's after your heart. God, not chasing after the world, but those men that are after your heart. God, our desire is that we raise Timothy's, God, who men who are students, of the word. So God, we need your help. We can't uh, do this on your own. And uh, we, we're so glad to know that help is available. You, you told us that um, this strength, our strength, our power comes from you. That same power that God you use to raise Jesus from the dead is residing on the inside of us. So greater is he that's in us, that's in us as moms, as wives, as women um, of the word um, than he that's in the world. So thank you, God. Bless our time together now. Bless our speaker as she speaks to your people, God, um, fix our ears that we might hear, fix our hearts that we might receive, that our families will be better for having heard the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So again, thank y'all so much for joining us every Tuesday. Um, some of you just press your way and we just say thank you. You know, some of you go to bed early, but you take the time to do this and, uh, and I, I appreciate it, I really do. So I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight. I want—I don't want to read all of her bio because I want to save the time for um, Dr. Marion Holloway to to speak to us tonight. So uh, Marion, Minister Marion, was um, born in Blanche, North Carolina. She was um, she spent her childhood on the family farm with her two um, brothers and two sisters. She was raised in a Christian home. And on her resume, Marion says that um, she served as a child in the church. So we thank God for that. And then after completing high school in um, Blanche, North Carolina, she went on to attend North Carolina Central University where she uh, received both a bachelor's and a, um, a bachelor's of art degree and a master's degree in library um, science. And then she worked for 35 years um, at in her school, the school library me, as a school library media specialist, and I love it when we have um, presenters who have opportunity to not only touch and plant seeds in their own biological children, but just have opportunities to touch other children as well. That's a that's a huge responsibility. That's that's a um, it's a responsibility. It's a it's a pleasure, but it's also a responsibility when we come in, in contact with other students. So we thank God for this, uh, Marion's career. 
at the school. Um, she was a national board certified teacher. Um, she was a workshop facilitator. And um, she said her retirement, Marin, uh, Minister Marin has retired and um, said her retirement has allowed her to focus on God's calling for this season in her life. Um, she preached her initial sermon and she was licensed in 2012. Now get this, after retirement, she has received her certificate in biblical studies um, from Northeastern Regional Bible College. She has, she has received, after retirement, a master's um, in Christian counseling and a doctor of religion, um, religious studies, knowledge of, um, of the Bible. Marion is our first lady. Uh, some of, I say our because there are a lot of I see a lot of friendship faces at Friendship Chapel Baptist Church. Um, married to our pastor, Doctor um, Ina Calloway. Today is his birthday. Marion, please tell um, Minister Marion, please tell Pastor Happy Birthday. Um, she says she gladly. She's first lady at Friendship. She was um, recently appointed as pastor of women. The women at Friendship Chapel Baptist Church. She's the women's pastor. She is over the um, sister to sister ministry at Friendship. She's over our grief share ministry. Marion has a, a passion. She has a desire to see women grow um, spiritually. So she, she works tirelessly helping women to grow spiritually. She and Pastor both um, encourages our youth and our young people to grow academically emotionally and spiritually and to become disciples for Christ. So that passion is shared by Marion and uh, by pastor and they, they work and serve at the Hope House ministry, a nonprofit ministry right in the heart of Wake Forest, North Carolina where she and pastor, uh, that ministry was founded by them. So we're so thankful um, for that, Marion is again married to Pastor um, Dr. Ina Colloway. They have four children, well, eight, four children, four um, in laws. They have eight grandchildren and one great granddaughter, Zuri. Um, Marion um, is an intercessor. She has a, the gift of intercessory prayer. And that is so true. That's on her resume, but that is so true. When, when Marion praise and, and it makes me feel good to know that we as mothers have somebody like Marion on our team coming here to pray with us and she's here almost every Tuesday encouraging us encouraging me encouraging us to pray so she's truly an intercessor when she prays she lingers and she labors the very first assignment or, or uh, program that Marion I served on when she first came to Friendship I, um, I remember we were organizing the, the program and everything that we did, Marion would say, let's pray about it. Let's pray about it. Let's, let's just table that. Let's just pray about that. Let's just pray about that. And you know how some people will say, I'm praying for you or let's pray about it. And they don't really mean it. But and you knew without doubt that Marion meant that when she said, let's, let's pray about that. So, um, and, and as I was talking about that during that time, I said, I wish I had a nickel for every time she said, <laughs> I would, I would be rich. So I'm just so, um, she's truly an intercessor. She, um, and I love this statement. And this will be the last statement that I say so that I can turn it over to her. Um, it says that the security of God's guidance in her, in her life has allowed her to carry her own load with energy and confidence as first lady. And I, and I know now it's not just as first lady, but it's as pastor, it's as you know, women's ministry is that as an educator at the college that she's teaching at. So, Marion, thank you, uh, Minister Marion, thank you for coming and um, just encouraging us tonight as mothers. And I will turn it over to you now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Lori. I, I really appreciate that. And I just want to start. We at Friendship, every time we start something, we start in a praise. And so just want to take a minute just to praise God and to lift him up. And our pastor would be clapping his hands because he likes a, a hand clap of praise. But just so howsoever you desire to just give God a praise, because I know you, you come and you're sitting here this evening and you come from different uh, backgrounds. You may have worked. You Sometimes I'm, I'm hiding because I'm trying to get the kitchen cleaned up after dinner. So 
but it's a good time just to first, let's just stop and give God a praise. And you know, the word says, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set your glory above the heavens. And then Psalms says, praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of his marvelous work. And then I want to go to Psalms 34 and 8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. And I want to change that last verse just for a second. Blessed is the mother who trusts in God. Praise our God. Praise our God. And yes, from my bio, I do believe in, in, in spiritual growth. And that's kind of what I'm going to come from uh, tonight because I don't know a lot of different messages to, to share except the importance that we are growing spiritually, especially as mothers. But I do want to start off first with encouraging you for just being here tonight. Every week, Lori does say that. She thanks you for coming. But I want to encourage you just to remind you that whatever circumstances you are dealing with, we know we are focusing on mothers with sons, but children, whatever we're dealing with. Because you come here on Tuesday, your children or whatever concerns you have, you, you are better. Because there's a scripture that says, and it's Proverbs eleven fourteen. it says, where there is no counsel, the people fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Mm -hmm. And when we gather here on this ministry, we gather together. We've had so many good messages and I have truly been blessed, mm -hmm. but you should, should consider each other as counselors. We come here as counselors, supporting each other, sharing with each other, lifting each other up. And we're doing it because we love our sons, but also for the sake of Christ. Then I also want to give my personal testimony. I have uh, been here. I probably missed about three or four times since I've been coming on. I come in and I, and I turn off the, the, the camera because I don't want to be seen because that's what I like, believe it or not, by nature. I like to be in the, the background. I like to sit back and just soak it all in. But sometimes God says you have to share. And I want to start off with my testimony because when I first I heard about the ministry even before I was invited. And when I was invited to this ministry, I got online simply because I have six grandsons. And my commitment to pray for my grandsons is what led me to this ministry to start with. But I must say it has really been a blessing to me because I remember the first night that I, I, I tuned in and I'm terrible with names. But one of the things they talked about was being a safe place for our young men. And I thought about that. And first of all, what this reminded me of, as Laurie said, I spent a lot of years in education. I spent 33 years in middle school education, believe it or not, and loved every minute of those uh, middle school years. But I was reminded through this ministry how God did give me a, a purpose in the school system, like you said. And I do want to encourage these, your mothers, find someone in that school that your child can relate to. Make it your business to develop relationships within the school because it may be the cafeteria worker it may be the janitor, it may be the bus driver, but there could be someone in that school, if you have school age children, that will connect with your child because God has placed them there. And I recognize for so many years, God did place me in the library. And I was that place, I was that place where those children that everybody else called bad could come into the library and could find a place. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for that because I remember one time I was having difficulty with a child and I was really trying to help the child and the parent just was negative. In fact, the 
the parent even wrote a negative letter about me. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and the Holy Spirit said, I put you there to take care of other children. And if you do what I ask you to do, I'm going to take care of your child. Now, uh, we've heard that we have four adult children. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are a blending family. And uh, we have four adult children and all of those four, those four adult children have been married longer than we have. So that is an interesting thing right there, but that's, that's, an, that's another topic. Um, but we do have eight grandchildren and uh, we have six grand boys. Um, but I am the natural mother of one daughter. So while I was in that middle school and, and while I was sometimes, um, how do I say it? Mm. Sometimes some of the other teachers did not understand what my calling was and why I could allow students to come into the library and I could make them comfortable. They didn't understand that. But I thank God that God taught me, as I have said, if you take care of these children that I sent to you, I am going to take care of your child. And I will say, praise be to God. If my child lives to see Sunday, she will be 40 years old. And God has truly blessed her. And I thank God for that. And I thank him for revealing that to me. You know, you may not be able to take care of your child, but you may have another child that God puts in your life to minister to. And whatever your child needs, he's going to be taking care of, 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 of that child. So I do want to encourage you for that. If you have um, students in the school system, develop relationships, help your child develop those positive relationships, because God will place people in your child's life if you walk with him and be obedient. So that was my little testimony. Thank you all for being here. I thank God for this ministry and I appreciate what it has done for me in my life. And before I go on any further, I do see some names. I see my niece, Danielle, would you wave your hand? I see you. Thank you for being here. Believe it or not, that's my only niece and she is the mother of, of a son. Thank you. I think I saw my sister Naomi Totten's name. Yes, I see her. Praise God for her because I also, there she is, wave sister Naomi, because that's another way that I learned to pray for boys because she has an only son. And praise be to God. One of the prayers that we have prayed for that son has been answered. Can I get a thumbs up, Naomi? Praise God, praise God. So, so, so we've been praying for our boys and we pray for our nephews. So, so thank God that I have a praying family. I have some praying sisters and uh, we do pray and God has been faithful. Amen. So with that being said, <laughs> I said a lot for an introduction, but I thank God for it. So, but in my journey, I've also had some, some difficulties. And as I said, we have six grandsons. And um, my task, I know, is to pray for them. But in a blended family, I found myself the mother of one natural daughter, <laughs> one child. And then I found myself, all of a sudden, a grandma. <laughs> a grandma of eight and a grandma of six boys. And I also need to just share this. Uh, I never had a grandmother, I really didn't. So I didn't know a lot about being a grandmother but I knew I was called for a purpose. So that's the other thing that this ministry has done for me. And out of trying to remember or find what my calling is with these grandsons that he has put in my life. And then being reignited for my calling with other young men. I had to go back and, and do some sort of, I would say soul searching. And that's where I wanna come from tonight. Uh, I heard Lori's prayer and we are, we are praying. We want to, um, 
we want to raise children of God. We want to raise young men of God. But the question is, how can we raise young men of God without our knowing some things about who we are? And as Lori said in my bio, I believe in the need for women to grow spiritually, regardless of what their circumstances are, regardless of what you are doing, because you will go through some things, but we always need to be focused. We always need to be concerned about how we are growing. So just for a few minutes tonight, and this is geared to the mothers, but whoever is listening, I have some questions that I wanna ask. And these questions, and that's another thing, I don't come as an expert, praise God. I minister out of my weaknesses. I minister out of what I have learned. I minister out of what God has spoken to me and my growth. So I don't come as an expert, but I come out of my weaknesses and how God has spoke to me and my growth. So I have some questions that I would just like to, to, to pose. I want you for a few minutes, so let's, let's stop thinking about our sons. Yes, we are mothers with sons and that's the purpose. But I want us to think about ourselves. And we did have one, I think it was Trey Hartsfield, who talked about the need for mothers to grow. And so I'm kind of coming from, excuse me, coming from that angle. And here's some questions. I don't want you to answer the questions. I don't want you to get on the chat and answer the questions. I just want you to think about these questions. The first question is, who are you? The second question, what are your gifts and what are your talents? The next question, what are your weaknesses? What is your purpose or, or calling? And then are you living in that purpose or call? And the next question is, what is the last scripture you used to guide you in making a decision or even before you did something? Or maybe you had to decide that you were gonna do something and you didn't do something because of the word. What is the last scripture you use to guide you in making a decision? Again, these are some thought questions. All right, the first question is, who are you? We get so caught up when somebody asks us who we are. We get so caught up on our titles. We get so caught up on what we do, what our titles are. Lots of times we get caught up on what is the answer somebody else wants to hear? What, is, what does somebody else want me to be or somebody else want me to do? But I'm praying everybody here is saved and a child of God. So let's look at some scripture. John 1 and 12. But as many as received him, to him he gave the right to become children of God. As a mother or grandma or whoever you are, you need to know that you are a child of God. And this is what you want for your children to know that they are a child of God. First Peter two and nine says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but you are now the people of God. And then 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All of us have been through different things. We're in different circumstances. We're in different situations. If we have children, our children are in different paths. 
We don't, I don't know what your children are dealing with, what you're dealing with, but whatever it is, I challenge you and I encourage you tonight to face those things, knowing that you are a child of God. Amen. Second question. What are your gifts? What are your talents? What are your weaknesses? First Peter 4 and 10. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Sometimes as mothers or grandmothers or stepmothers or aunts or just caring people, we get so caught up on what we need to do for others that we forget that we are gifted and we are good stewards. We focus so much on what we are doing and forget that we are to be good stewards of what God has given us to do. Now we know we can talk about talents and we can know we talk about gifts. We don't have a long time to study. No, we gotta move on. But know that you have been called, you have gifts. And then what are your weaknesses? Sometimes we do not want to face our weaknesses. If we don't know how to face our own weaknesses, how can we encourage our boys? Because there are none that are perfect. And I like this scripture and you all know it, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Accept the fact that you are not perfect, but accept the fact also that God's grace is sufficient and whatever your weaknesses are, that is when his power is perfected. Share that with your children. Let them know, instead of you trying to pretend that you're perfect and you got it all right, and they better do this and they better do that and you want them to do this and that, let them know that they have faults just like you have faults, amen. So. The next question, what is your purpose or calling and are you living in that purpose or call? If you have been blessed to be a parent, if you've been blessed to even maybe be a foster parent, if you've been blessed to be an aunt, if you have been blessed to be a friend of a child, maybe even a godchild or a friend, whatever that is, then God has called you to a ministry to that child. Every person has a calling by God. Every person is called to do something. Ephesians 4 and 1 says, Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, I beseech you to have a walk that's worthy of the calling with which you were called. Know what your calling is and walk worthy of that. And then Colossians 3 and 23, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Mm -hmm. I wanna stop right there because sometimes when we are parenting, we are so busy wanting our children to look a certain way, to act a certain way, and to make us look good a certain way. But we have to do what we do, not unto men, but we are to do it heartily unto the Lord. Okay, uh, my time is fastly running out, so I'm gonna run on through these questions. Um, 
then I ask, are you living in that purpose of call? Are you really living, seeking what God would have you to do? If you don't know what your call is, ask, ask God. If you don't feel like you know, if you're floundering and you're doing this and you, as my mama would say, you dip dabbing here and yonder and you just don't know what you're doing and you are tossed to and fro, ask God to show you what your calling is. Then what is the last scripture you use to guide you in making a decision? We know what the word says. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. We know that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that we may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. There is one thing I learned in all of the years I worked in middle school. How do people raise children without knowing the word of God? And then my other thought also is, how can we expect children to grow if they don't know the word of God, if they have no fear of the word of God but then how can we as parents raise our children with a love for the word of God? If we are not allowing the scripture to guide what we do. Now, I'm not talking about quoting scripture and I'm not talking about trying to beat somebody on the head with the Bible, but I'm talking about, do you really use the word as a lamp to your feet? and the light to your path. Amen, amen. So I don't know how you answered those questions, but I challenge you to think about those, thinking about who you are and what God has called you to do. Now let's go back to our mothers with sons that you've had a little bit of time just to think about yourself. And those questions were just to guide you. I didn't plan to come up with any answers, but just to pique your interest in thinking about these questions. And what is God calling you to do? Because we want, as in Lori's prayer, we want to raise children who love God and follow God. So, we want our children to know who they are. Is that right? We want our children to know what their purpose or calling is in their lives. We want our children prepared to walk worthily of what it is that God has called them to do. Not what we think will make them look good, what we want them to do, what will make us feel good because yes, we like to brag about our children, but what does God want them to do? And then we want our children, especially our boys to be able to understand, read the word and use the word as their guide. There is so much out here. There is so much out here. And we're living in a time and a season where if our children do not know the word of God, that they will be tossed in all different directions. And that's what is happening. Look at the deception in our land. Look at the lies that are being told. Look at the different religions that our children are being exposed to. Good things that it seems. If our children don't know the word, they will be lost. And where are they going to get a learning for the word from? It has to be from their home. Amen. Amen. So I challenge you as you're thinking about your sons and what your sons need, if you're praying about what your sons and your sons need, Make sure that you know who you are. Make sure that you are growing in Christ. 
make sure that you are setting that example. Because believe it or not, God is calling all of us to be disciples. We are Friendship Chapel, we're studying about disciples. God is all calling all of us to be disciples. And the first persons that we should be able to disciple are our children. Amen? Amen. 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 So that is my word of encouragement. I hope um, that is your word of encouragement. Let me look at my time. It is 836. So um, I am, I do have some prayers that I'm going to pray, but we will, I will leave this time right now if there are any comments um, about anything or anybody want to share. Anybody want to add anything? comments or questions anybody you know Mary you made um you made the comment about um ministering to our child and then worrying more about what man thinks or what the world thinks more so than about God you know I had to literally change my prayer for my son I um and, and, you know, he was, he went to college and then he dropped out of college for a while. And, and that was my prayer. To, I just wanted him to finish college. I wanted him to get a job. And I literally had to change it to, I just want him to be a man of God. Amen. God to Amen. walk in righteousness. And I had to pray that, just that, just, I just want him to walk in righteousness. And then everything else uh, would then began to just fall in place. So, so you're right. One of our speakers, and I can't remember who it was um, here on the call, said that we've been called to steward the plans of God. Amen. Plan for us, a plan for our children. And we're called and we got we to gotta stay in tune with God to know what that is. What would you have me to say? And what would you have me to do? And how would you have me to minister? So yeah, and I'll pause um, right here as well to see if there are any other comments or any questions. And while that, I, I will share, uh, we'll share something else too. And this is a personal testimony. I thank God that um, I told you I, I am the natural mother of one, but, and when I talked about what are your weaknesses, well, I knew from the very start that I was not equipped to be a mom. Um, I mean, I just, I just knew that lots of different reasons. I was not equipped. However, and because of that weakness, I truly prayed for that child before that child was born. And I was, and I was sincere because that was one something Now I can go to, I could go in the classroom and I can teach a child all day, but, um, <laughs> but taking care of them 24 <laughs> seven. So I, I, I had to, out of my weaknesses that I knew I was weak in that area, I had to actually pray for that child before she was born. And believe me, I sincerely, I said, Lord, you will have to take care of my child. And I meant that from the depths of my heart. And I prayed those prayers out of that from all the way. And sometimes I still have to remind myself, yeah. but you gave her to God before she was born. Mm -hmm. And and I thank God for that. And, and that's that's. I don't know how easy that is for people to do, but I do thank God that I, that the Holy Spirit left me to give my child. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't want her to, I just didn't, all I wanted to do was for God to take care of her. And I could, I have some testimonies that I could tell and I won't do that, but God has been faithful. He has been faithful. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's, I think if that's the core of my message, I would say, let, let, let Jesus lead you. <laughs> Just let let God lead you. Yes. I'm sorry. Anybody was there somebody wanted to say something? I do have a, a statement or a question. Okay. Um, it's it's been said that, and maybe especially in the black community, that we raise our daughters, but we nurture our sons. And that basically we, we raise our daughters to be. I guess, strong, independent, and that we kind of nurture our sons. And that's why, like when our sons get married, there's always a rift between the mother-in-law and the new wife because we're looking for that wife to almost kind of pick up where the mother may have left mm -hmm. off. What, what do you, how do you 
respond to that? Or what is your opinion about that? Okay, I respond to that in, first of all, as a mother, our first, my first concern is as a mother, am I saved? As a mother, am I walking according to God's will? Uh, am I really seeking God for my thoughts and for my actions? Okay. And am I seeking him for wisdom and true, true wisdom? And if I am doing that, the Holy Spirit is going to lead me in how to raise my son, what my son will need or what my daughter will need. Now, if we miss that, <laughs> if we miss that, what that wisdom of God, that Holy Spirit working in, in us, and I, and I don't want to make light of it, but it's real serious and I believe it wow. because you cannot, I don't believe you can raise a child that's personal, really raise a child without the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, because it is the Holy Spirit that knows everything that teaches you, reveals to you all of yeah. those things. So that's why it's so important that we as mothers are walking and we are constantly growing in Christ. That, that is uh, that's so true. And that is so easy to do, Danielle, um, to nurture our sons, because you hear people say he's a mama's boy and, you know, I don't want my daughter depending on anybody. Naturally, that, that's just so easy to do. But I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Marion that, man, we have got to be led by God. Because you do, you fall in that trap of, you know, that's my boy. I mean, I fell in the trap of, that's my baby. And he was a baby boy too. So, yeah, but we, you've got to be led by God. I mean, it is truly so, the wisdom of God in raising them. Because you, I mean, your prayer has to be, I just want him to be a man of God. And yes. see God and his righteousness and everything else to fall in place. Even in that situation. Amen. Amen. So, so, um, as I said, we're not perfect. And sometimes we have to go back and correct, <laughs> oh, correct yeah. some mistakes, yeah. even correct some things that we may have grown up with. Yes. But the good news is God is able mm -hmm. and he can fix mm -hmm. whatever it is yeah. uh, that, that, that's, that, that we have not done. His, yeah. his mercy is new every day. So yes, that and, and we pray that prayer. Mm -hmm. So that weakness that we started out with, yeah. we see God correct it, fix our mistakes. It makes, it makes us that much more grateful. So that weakness wasn't so bad after all, because That's it's right. such a grateful heart because of what God had to fix in our lives. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. yes. So don't, let's just call out those weaknesses. Like you said, um, Minister Marion, call them out. Call right? them out. Oh, call yeah. them out. And the first thing you do is have to call them out to yourself. And when you are walking in the word and when you're studying the word and when you are walking with the Holy Spirit, he will reveal those things to you. Yes. Call them out. Amen. Any other, Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> Mrs. Holloway, when yes. you were talking about uh, your daughter, yes. but as a librarian slash educator or educator, um, it, it goes to show that it takes a village and we are reminded that our educators have a lot of influence on our yes, children. Yes. So you want to make sure that they're in peace, but you know, it just didn't stop with your child. God put it in you to reach out to those other children. And I'm sure somewhere along the way, it made a big difference in the children's lives. So we just have to be reminded that it takes a village to raise our children. And we wanna make sure that they're kind of in the right village and, and pray about it because Amen. we can't, we, can't um, uh, we don't know everybody with whom our children will come in contact, but wow. we just pray that God puts the right people in there. Yeah. And I could see it in your heart when we were working at the Hope House in the after school program that we were trying to give these children um, you know, as much guidance as God will, was leading us to give them. So I appreciate what you did as an educator. And, you know, I have seen how your prayers, you definitely have a relationship and they are very powerful. So I appreciate that we have been able to learn from your prayers. Amen. Amen. 
And Sister Margot, we we're praying about Hope House. We're we're hang on because we're gonna get back in Hope House and do some more more tutoring <laughs> as the Lord leads us, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just waiting to see where he's leading us. Yeah. And, and and we and we may you may hear us say pray about it, you know. And sometimes <laughs> people will say, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear that. Right. But but we can pray when we can't do anything else. Prayer, um, I've come to learn and it's like learning more and more how important that is. I think I'm, I me and my mom and me and my sister were saying the other day, you either believe in prayer or you don't. And and I, I mean I truly, truly believe that is a powerful tool that we that we don't use. Pray about it. And that's another part of my growth because it used to be when I would say, Well, let's pray about it, Lori. <laughs> you know, I would think, Oh, that seems so fickle. And it seems, but now I have grown. And that's the best thing I could do is to yes. pray. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I have a doctoral degree. And you know what I learned in my doctoral degree? Counseling starts with prayer. Praise God. <laughs> Everything starts with prayer. So yes, that's, that's and, and, and I've, I've seen him work. I have seen prayer work. Yeah, me too, me too. Any, any, anything else? Any other questions? Any other comments? We would love to hear from you. Okay, if there are no more comments, I do, I'm, I'm going to lead us in prayer. And, um, and, and that's, a, that's a different topic that I could cover is, is praying and praying in the scriptures. But I'm going to do a little cheating because I am still a librarian. And I have this book. I don't know if any of you have this book or not. It's called Praying the Scriptures for Your Children. And I asked Lori that I, I told her that I wanted to close out in prayer because closing out with we talked about what we want for our sons. And these are scripture prayers. And I admit uh, I had written down some scriptures as I have been studying that I wanted to use, but for some reason, uh, my time ran out. So I am going to use this book, Praying the Scriptures for Your Children, to close us out in prayer if there are no other comments, uh, because uh, that's that's what we want. We want to be 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 sincere that with what we're doing. So if there are no other comments, I will um, just go into prayer. And the first group of prayers is the first thing we want for our children is for salvation. We want yes. salvation for our children. Yes. So the first prayers we are praying is for our children's salvation. Amen. And from so we start with 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 6. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this evening that you reveal, remove the veil from our children's eyes, that they can see the light of the gospel. Oh, Father, we pray that you shine your light in his heart and their hearts to give them the light of the knowledge of your glory in the face of Christ. Yes. Father, we pray according to 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26, that you put people in our son's lives who will gently instruct them, that you will grant them repentance, lead into a knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you, will you cause our young men to come to their senses, to escape from the trap of the enemy who has taken them captive to do his will. Mm -hmm. Father God, we pray according to H. Acts 26 and 18, Lord, that you would open up our son's eyes, Lord, that you will turn them from darkness to light. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you remove every power of Satan, yes. Father God, yes. so that our sons may receive forgiveness of sins. Yes. And Father, yes. that they be placed among those who are sanctified by faith in Christ. Yes. Father God, we pray for 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Father God, that we not, that our children, our boys be not haunted by their past, Father. Yes. Whatever it is that they may have done, Father God, whatever it is they may be suffering with father god lord we pray in the name of jesus that you remind them that if anyone is in christ lord that they are a new creature father god that any mistakes that have been made father god that all those old things have gone father through jesus christ and that the new things have come Oh, Father God, we pray according to Romans 10 and 9, Father God, that our sons, Father God, if they have not done so, would confess with their mouth that Jesus is 
Lord, Father God. And we pray, Lord, that they will believe, Father God, in their hearts, that you have raised them from the dead, Father God, because we want our sons to call on your name, Father God, and Lord, we want you to save them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray according to John. John 3, 16, Father God, we thank you for loving our son so much that you gave your one and only son for them, Father God, that when they believe in you, Father God, they will not perish, but they will have eternal life. Father God, we pray according to Colossians 2, verses 6 through 7, Father God, that our sons will continue to live in Christ. Father, that they going to be rooted and built up in Christ. They're going to be strengthened in the faith as they have been taught, Father God, and they're going to be overflowing with thankfulness, Father. We pray according to Jeremiah 32, 39 through 40, Father God, that you count our sons as your people, Father God, and that you be God, Father. We pray that you give them a singleness of heart and action, Father God, that they will always fear you, Father God, for their own good, Father God, and for the good of their children, Father God. We pray that you make that everlasting covenant with our boys, Father, that you never stop giving, don't give them the up, Father, and that you inspire them to fear you so that they will never turn away from you. We pray according to Ezekiel 11 and 19, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will put a new spirit in our children's lives, Father God. Oh, Father, we pray that you will remove any heart of stone that may be in our sons, Father. You replace them, Father God, with a heart of flesh, Father God. Lord, we call, we ask you to cause our sons to follow your decrees, Father, to keep your laws, Father God. Oh, Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus by the authority of the blood of Jesus that they know, Father God, that they belong to you and that you are their God. Oh, Father, we pray according to Psalms 125 and 1, Father God, that they will put their trust in you and never be shaken, Father. Then we pray Ephesians 3, 18 and 19. We pray that our children that our sons be rooted and established in love, Father God. May they have power together with all the saints, that they will grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And Lord, that they know you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they know that your love that surpasses all understanding, that our children may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, Father God. And then, Heavenly Father, we pray according to 1 Peter 4 and 10, that you let our children use their gift to serve others, Father God, faithfully administering your grace in its very forms so that in all things father god you will be glorified father god in the name of jesus we stand in agreement father god with your word father because we know your word to be a solid foundation father god we know your word to be true father then father god we know father god that as we come to you father god that we have a high priest father god making intercessions father god on every person on this call father god oh father god make an intercessions father god for for every young man, for every boy, yeah, Father God. God, who is represented on this call. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we decree and declare that you have yeah. a purpose for them, Father God, yeah. a purpose for the Father for them to prosper, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we declare, Father God, that the enemy, Father God, has no authority over our boys tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Yeah. We pray, Father God, for peace, Lord. We pray for for deliverance, Father God. We pray for healing, Father God. Lord, we pray for our mothers, Father God, and all of those, Father God, who stand in the position, Father God, to be mothers and nurturers, Father God, of our children, Father. You anoint them, Father God. You bless them, Father God. You direct them, Father God. You teach them, Father God. And then, Lord, even in their weakness, Father God, you lift them up, Father God. Oh, Father God, that you may get the glory, that you may get the praise, Father God. Yeah. And then, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that for every child, Father 
Father God, every person, that thy will be done, thy kingdom come yes. on yes. earth as it is in heaven, Father yes. God. Oh Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, we magnify your holy name. And then Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence, you. Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that you are our God. It is in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. 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 Praise our God. And praise all our right. God. Thank, Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you, Lori, you. for inviting me. Thank you, you for so giving welcome. me this time. You are so welcome. Thank you. And Thank you. Blessings to everybody. Yes. Good night, everybody. Continue praising God for hearing our prayer and answering our prayer. Thank you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much.